Brian Mullins has consistently been on the forefront of technology and is a pioneer in the field of augmented reality. His experience with human machine interface and computer vision technologies enabled him to found Dacry and develop its proprietary 4D technologies for the enterprise. Prior to founding Dacry, Brian transitioned to industrial robotics from the field of military command and control systems after spending three years as a consultant to the Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command in San Diego. Today, Brian will be talking about how AR will transform work in the future, so please join me in welcoming Brian to the stage. Good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite speeches that I give every year, uh, talking about the future of AR uh, amongst the people who are making that future happen. Uh, today, you'll see um, things like this, these big words from evolution to revolution. And we're not just talking about revolution like industrial revolution, but uh, revolution in the way that we think about what work is uh, and how AR will transform work in the future. At, at Daiquiri, we design products that are designed to uh, meet the needs of the future of work. And along the way, we've learned a lot about what's important with that and what's important to augmented reality and what people are doing in the industry. Um, and it, and it's, it's interesting when we talk about what's important because when you look at a sentence like this, what's important about the sentence doesn't necessarily jump out at first. Um, it turns out, at least in my experience in a daiquiri, um, that comma actually is, is pretty important. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little story about a moment that I had along the way that really uh, landed the plane uh, for me on that idea. Um, and it was, of all things, in a voiceover studio where we had um, contracted a voice actor to uh, do a voiceover for one of our videos. And if you've ever been in a voiceover studio, you're on one side of the glass with the director and the talent's on the other side of the glass. Talent, I'm from Hollywood. Uh, is on the other side of the glass and uh, they're saying lines over and over. And we had this idea that um, uh, you could say work in the future and conjure up this image of a worker holding her jetpack and her smart helmet and doing this amazing job. And so the voice actor said over and over again, work in the future, work in the future. And the director would say, uh, louder with more energy. Um, no, not as loud, no energy. And it just didn't fit, it didn't work. And then all of a sudden that director leaned over and pushed the button and said, uh, try it as a noun. And then we got work in the future. And I tell you that story because it was this aha moment for us in what's important about what we do and the opportunity we have in front of us with what work in the future is. Um, and when you think about it, you think, well, it must be doing really complex things with really cool technology like augmented reality. Um, but I think you have to step back and ask the question, what is work, to really understand why that's important. And that's what we did. And when you ask people what is work, uh, things uh, like repetition come up. Um, you know, things like, uh, you know, it's labor and you have to do these things over and over. And people are very disconnected from their environments. I mean, in fact, in most modern management theories, people think that management makes these decisions and then the workers go and they either do it right or they make a mistake. And the truth is the workers are making decisions all day long and if you can give them information and put it into context, they don't wanna make a mistake. They'll make the right decision and you'll allow them to become empowered um, to make better decisions and be creative problem solvers, which is what people are good at. And the reason that was important was we learned that work, and when we say work, isn't about labor at all. It's work in the sense of work of art. And it can be very purposeful, and it can, it can connect people together. And, and if we create that situation, we can really empower people to reach their potential with technology. It, it really is about the people who use augmented reality that are going to make it change the world. And how do we make that change happen? Um, well, it's happening today. Um, augmented reality is solving problems in industrial environments today. Um, solving those problems on very large scales 
uh, transferring uh, knowledge to workers so that they can do things faster and, and better and, and change the economies of how they do that work. Um, if you were here on Monday, you may have seen uh, Paul Davies from Boeing pr provide his study data, which is fascinating. And it's just the first of many of these studies that are emerging now that reinforce how powerful and transformative augmented reality is in the workplace and, and what an effect that it's going to have on the world. Now, um, in order to see how we get from what we're doing today, though, I think we have to take a step back and we have to look at the past um, and look at history and other technologies that have started in the workplace and then transformed the world. And these three come to mind. Uh, if you look at the wheel, it, it, it made it uh, convenient to move things, but, but really the reason it is important is it allowed us to transition from a hunter-gatherer society to an agrarian society. I mean, that's, that's pretty important if I can change my work from uh, hunt all day so I don't starve to death to let's farm and then save up energy and then get together and share ideas and, and form the basis of a civilization. Um, you know, interestingly, in the middle, you've got the printing press, and this is a device that was invented when literacy in the world was less than 10%, uh, needless to say, a, a niche market. Um, but it, it transformed the work of how books were reproduced. It made uh, that type of information available to more people. Uh, worldwide literacy is actually within reach today because of that. And that transforms society and allows us to do so much more so much faster. You look at the smartphones that we have in our pocket, the, the foundational tech of all the augmented reality we do today comes from those cell phones. Um, but they didn't start as, as the smartphones we have today. They started as these giant backpacks and uh, people would um, carry them with them if uh, it was valuable to them to be able to stay connected and to make decisions. And many people did. And then many more people did. And then they got smaller and they got better. Um, and now there are more phones in the world than there are people. And many of you are using them right now. I can see that. So why do I talk about that cycle, though? The, the, the cycle, many people will tell you that if you don't understand history, that you're doomed to repeat it. Um, but the, the truth is we're hoping absolutely to repeat that with augmented reality. Um, we want to connect people in new ways. Uh, to share knowledge when they're at work, when they're doing what they do. Um, that, that knowledge transfer is, is really interesting because it's not just connecting you to information. It's, it's connecting you with ideas in a way that lets you understand them visually, um, almost creating a situation where we have a new cognitive literacy. Um, and we think that augmented reality is the technology that can deliver that. Um, and what I mean is being able to look and, and experiencing these things from so many different perspectives um, allows you to see how things are connected and to understand them in new ways. Um, a, a simple analogy would be that connecting me to information could tell me that tomato is a fruit, um, but cognitive literacy is going to let me know not to put it into a fruit salad. Um, and, and that's what we're talking about with the technology. At, at, at Daiquiri, our vision is that we'll be able to put together some of the most innovative technologies in, in ways that will help us to achieve that, that, that future where, where work is improved, uh, where work is transformed. One of the steps is brain-computer interface. Um, we think the idea of using an EEG today to understand stress and focus, but also provide the safety and, and, and peace of mind of, of detecting heart attack and stroke, um, you know, and, and having an early warning that could save a life is, is, is absolutely um, you know, fantastic, but, but someday we'll actually be able to use human intent to interface with these technologies. Um, there are new generations of wearables that are going to let us do things uh, mentally and physically that we have not imagined yet and are just beginning to start the conversations about. Um, it'll let us work closer to robotics and machines that amplify what we're capable of and, and hopefully solve the most important problems that we have today. And imagine if you're in that future and you could put on a helmet and you could know how to do any job. You know, you, you could decide when you work and what you do. We could open up the possibility for more people in the world to be artists or scientists and, 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 and follow their passions. And, and I just 
personally think it's amazing, the idea of a world where there's seven billion artists and scientists solving problems and, 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 and pushing us further than we ever imagined that we could go. And um, I think that uh, one of my favorite quotes is actually Albert Einstein. He, he says that every person's a genius, but if you judge a fish on their ability to climb a tree, they'll, think their li they'll live their life thinking they're a failure. And at Daiquiri, we really believe that that's true. And, and if you can help people tap into their genius, it's one of the most important things that you can do. Um, because if you can change the way that a person works, you can change their entire life. And that's what we mean when we say work in the future. And so now uh, I, I have a couple more minutes left and well, thank you. Love to open it up to some questions um, from the audience. Yes, we definitely have time for questions. Cool. Thank you, Brian. Hands up for some questions. Thank you. Uh, over the last couple of years, um, do you see a shift away from consumer and supporting ad campaigns as a way to um, monetize AR technologies and more into industry applications? That's at least the impression that I take away, and this is a um, valid observation. Yeah, the, the volume was a little bit low, but if I repeat the question, um, uh, do I see that ways of that moving to industrial applications is a way to monetize the technology? Is that, is that the question? So this is um, basically taking over um, a, the uh, consumer-facing uh, campaign, supporting experiences, and kind of like a soft pivot industry-wide. It's, it's a great question. So the question is, is this taking over kind of the uh, consumer experiences? I, I think that I'll, um, I'll speak to for myself and for Daiquiri. Um, and you, know, you heard before in, in Mark's talk him saying the same things as well about solving the, the more important problems. Um, I, I think that it's, it's important to think about work through your whole life. And, and, and extend the thread of what I discussed um, throughout the life of a person. Because when you're an adult, work is how you leave your mark in the world and how you hit your potential. Um, but when you're younger and you're a student, um, your work is to learn. And uh, we think also when you're a child, your, your, your work is, is, is creativity and play. Um, so I think that supporting all of those through the life cycle is supporting work and an important part of what we do. You know, many of the things that that at Daiquiri we've done over the years, um, whether it's the elements or anatomy or some of the inspirational things that we've, we've done and really been proud of, um, still inspire our DNA today to push the limits on experience. And I, I think they're important problems to solve to open up the medium and, and creativity in the medium to the next generation of, of creators. Thanks. Okay, big round of applause for Brian, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Brian.